This is quite exciting. Um, I, I feel like this is by far the coolest conference I've ever been to. I, I think this is the nicest stage I've ever been invited to speak on in terms of atmosphere. Michael and I just said we felt like we were joining a rock concert. So um, <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, joining our session. And thank you to Future Proof for putting this on. It's really an incredible thing to see. Um, I, I, by way of short introduction, uh, my name's Kristen Oliveri. I am the editor of uh, Crane Currency, which is a family office publication owned by Crane Communications. Um, I've been covering the wealth management and family office space for 17 years. And my favorite thing about it is that I get to talk to really interesting, cool people that are changing the world, like Michael. Um, so today I have the pleasure of introducing Michael Sonnenschein, the CEO of Grayscale Investments, the world's largest crypto asset manager. Uh, Michael was employee number one at Grayscale, and despite a background in traditional finance, which I won't hold against you, um, he learned that Bitcoin early on was really going to be a transformative asset. So let's fast forward to today. Uh, under Michael's leadership, Grayscale recently prevailed in its lawsuit against the Securities and Exchange Commission to bring Bitcoin even further into the regulatory perimeter as an ETF, and they're waiting the next steps. So, Michael, I think what, what's on everyone's mind is, is how that all came about. It's been a journey. Um, you know, I think contrary to a lot of what folks believe, Grayscale has long been on a mission to make digital currency as democratized and as you know, easy and familiar and accessible as possible. And dating all the way actually back to 2013 when we launched the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, we knew back then that we wanted um, all the investment vehicles, starting with GBTC, to not only make their way to the public market, but also eventually become ETFs, right? Borrowing from an investment product wrapper, which is very tried and true and used for all different types of investment exposures and tons of ETF users, you know, at this conference here. And, um, you know, I think for us, we've really prided ourselves as an organization that's asked for permission, not for forgiveness, right? We've brought digital asset investing to the investment community through existing rules and regs and, and really fit what we offer into existing frameworks. And it was disappointing that the SEC unfortunately denied the conversion of our flagship offering, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, to an ETF, um, which only left us with one choice, um, which was to have to sue them. Um, and this is a decision we, as an organization, obviously did not take lightly. Uh, as a regulated entity that, you know, the SEC oversees so many different aspects of our business, so to engage in very public litigation was something we really needed to weigh. But with investors in all 50 states and nearly a million investor accounts, um, this is really the only choice we had. And so fast forward 14 months later, um, not only got through the litigation and continuing to put really straightforward, common sense, compelling arguments in front of the, the DC circuit where the, course, uh, where the case was, uh, was heard, um, but we prevailed. Um, we had a unanimous panel of three judges that all voted in favor of Grayscale, and that has now vacated the SEC's denial order, um, taking us really one step closer to a spot Bitcoin approval, uh, which is really exciting. So what are next steps? So um, I'm not sure exactly what day it is today of the 45 days. I should probably have figured that out before I came on stage with you. But the day after we received the decision from the court kicked off a 45-day window uh, during which we're following the federal rules of appellate procedure, waiting to see if the SEC will or won't ask for a rehearing of the case. Um, and when we get to the end of that 45 days, the final mandate will be issued by the court, and that'll outline the operational next steps for the product. So what does this mean for Grayscale? What's your next steps as a company? Well, I think it's a really exciting time. It's an inflection point. You know, GBTC is the first of now 17 digital asset products that we have that have all been on this very prescriptive four-phase life cycle from private placements to public quotations to eventually becoming SEC reporting and ultimately to an ETF. And so we take a giant step back, which, you know, we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of Grayscale. So to have GBTC just on the precipice of being able to convert to an ETF, not only for us feels, you know, tremendously, you know, gratifying all the hard work that's gone into it, all the investors and service providers that have supported us, but it now also hopefully can pave the way for the rest of the Grayscale 
retail product family to also follow along that product life cycle, in which case you could see Ethereum, Litecoin, all other digital asset products that we offer also eventually coming to market as ETFs. Well, it feels like a very big moment for crypto and it is. for you. It is. It is. You know, I think um, as I think about where we are now, uh, September 2023, we're, you know, less than a year away from the next Bitcoin halving. We're a couple months away from a presidential election. We're spending a ton of time in D.C. We're seeing um, several bills passing through both chambers of Congress, seeing support from both sides of the aisle, it does really feel like a pivotal moment for crypto. And especially coming out of this third crypto winter, um, anecdotally what we hear and what we you know, see with our investors is that crypto is an asset class that's here to stay and everyone wants to be involved in it. So walk me through what you see as the future of crypto and what lies ahead in the next year. Well, you know, I think we're at an event today called Future Proof, right? And so I think any of you that are sitting in fiduciary roles where you're trying to advise your clients um, about how to allocate, you know, invest in the future for the future, um, we certainly believe crypto is going to be part of that. Over the next 25 years, uh, there'll be somewhere between 60 and $80 trillion of wealth uh, that gets transferred from an older generation down to a younger generation. And I'm certainly not one to say that 60 or $80 trillion is moving into crypto, um, but I'd be hard pressed to believe that the way that those assets are currently allocated today are gonna remain in the same posture that they have. And I do think crypto amongst other technologies will be an area that benefits from them. And we spoke about this earlier when we got together. It, is crypto being driven by the next gen? Where, where are you seeing that lie um, in terms of, of who's sort of moving it forward? Well, I think that's an important conversation, especially for financial advisors. Um, when I think about, you know, seeing GBTC, you know, hopefully in the near term converting to an ETF and the opening up of this market, I think advisors have really been waiting for a tool like a spot Bitcoin ETF to be able to make that core allocation to crypto for their clients. And maybe Bitcoin is just the tip of the spear, right? As they begin to think about other assets, whether it's Ethereum or other subsets of the crypto ecosystem. For a lot of advisors, though, what we've been hearing is that they've been in a tough spot where they do have clients that have wanted to get involved in crypto. They don't have a solution that's approved by the platforms that they work with um, or that supports their financial advisory practices. And so they do have clients that are taking assets away from advisors, going to Grayscale directly or going to a Coinbase or going to a different digital asset exchange. And that not only becomes problematic from the standpoint of the advisor because they're losing assets, but they now also don't have a complete picture of their client's portfolio. Um, and so I think a lot of advisors are very excited about that. What's been interesting is that crypto is such a journey in education, though, through all of these conversations. You certainly do have clients today that are getting increasingly savvy and knowledgeable about crypto, the role it can play in a portfolio, but we also do hear from clients that a lot of this is being driven by that next generation. The client's children are the one that are actually helping their parents to understand how they need to be investing. And even if it's only 20, 30, 50 bips, it is something that if they at least put some assets into it, they'll have some skin in the game, they'll start paying attention to it. And I'm sure a piece of this is education for the advisors themselves, right? How do they have a, a more thoughtful conversation around crypto in general? Um, and then how can that translate? Um, and I'm, do you get involved a little bit with that? Absolutely. I think what's so dynamic about crypto, about Bitcoin, is that it means something different to everyone you talk to. And that's okay, right? And I think that's certainly emblematic of the fact that crypto is a young asset class. It's only been around for a little bit more than a decade. And so as an advisor, whether you're using crypto as a digital gold, an inflation hedge, you might be thinking about it as perhaps a new technology. Um, for other folks, they think of it more akin to a payments rail. Um, those are just some of kind of the earliest use cases around, around Bitcoin specifically. And over time, what's been so fascinating being a part of this industry is that new use cases continue to emerge, right? Things where, you know, a couple years ago we weren't talking about, they weren't even 
conceived of, things like NFTs, things like um, you know, how large the market around stable coins have been, right? Crypto as an asset class is going to not only continue to evolve, but we're also going to start finding new use cases. I know, you know certainly one thing that my team has been paying attention to over the last six to nine months is as we've seen the emergence of AI, we've actually actually seen this convergence between AI and crypto, right? As much excitement as there is today around AI, what we've actually found is that for as many solutions as AI is coming up with, there's actually a lot of issues that are being created as well, deep fakes and authenticity and things of that nature. And so there's the beginning to be this conversation around using crypto and related technologies, blockchain, to be able to actually serve almost as a court of law for AI use cases. Um, and I think these are the types of trends that you know, hopefully we as an organization can continue to stay in front of um, and really hopefully continue to deliver solutions that can help advisors talk to their clients about it. I mean, to that point, there's so many trends, it's almost hard to keep up, right? So someone in my position that has conversations like this all the time, it's even hard for me to keep up. So how do people continue to educate themselves and, and keep up with the current trends in crypto? I'm not going to pretend it's easy. Um, we have an ever-expanding research team um, that's way smarter about this stuff than I am um, and publishes you know, multiple times a week trying to unpack a lot of this in a way that feels digestible and relatable. Any good books we should be reading? I don't know about books per se, um, because some of this stuff is so recently surfaced. Um, you know, if you certainly follow the conversation um, on Twitter uh, around Grayscale or any of the research that we put out, I'd certainly try to be as timely and relevant as we possibly can be. So what are you paying attention to as a firm right now in crypto? So there's a couple of upcoming catalysts. Um, you know, certainly we're looking forward to GBTC's conversion and the continued expansion of the market through more product structures coming into crypto, offering more access, more liquidity in the space. Um, you look out now it's September, roughly May of next year is when the next Bitcoin halving um, is going to happen. That should be another major catalyst around crypto. Um, and something else we're really paying attention to, which I touched on earlier, is actually the upcoming presidential election. Um, if you think about this upcoming election cycle, the youngest demographic of voters is going to be the largest constituent size it's ever been in a U.S. presidential election. That's unreal. And when you think about what it is that's important to that younger generation of investors, that youngest segment of investors, it does include things like crypto. And so even though we're early into the election cycle, you have been seeing presidential candidates come out very publicly with their stances around crypto and related technologies because they know their voters, their constituents are, you know, this is an issue for them and they need to know where their candidate stands on it. So looking forward in the next couple of years, where do you see Grayscale going and where, where you personally, um, what does the future hold for you? Um, well, let's start with Grayscale. Um, you know, I feel that where we are now and being on the precipice of this ETF conversion is years and years in the making. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears have gone into that. And it really just is the tip of the iceberg on the types of product exposures we can offer and the types of access that we can give to the investment community. So from a Grayscale perspective, I do feel like we're literally just getting started. Um, you know, we recently have filed for some other products to come to market that begin to bridge um, digital assets with more traditional equity exposures, which I think okay. will you know, continue to open up access to certain themes within the you know, investment community that haven't been tapped before. Um, and personally, in a couple years, well, if um, folks still have confidence in me, I hope to still be um, you know, at the helm at Grayscale. Uh, we're an organization that's agile and um, forward thinking and very inclusive and um, it's, uh, it's an honor and it's a privilege, and um, I'm just really excited to see how the team continues to fare you know, through um, what's going to be an exciting next couple of months. Because to speak about you personally, you were in the traditional financial realm to then come to crypto. What, can, what lessons can be learned in traditional finance or wealth management and those in, in our space that what can crypto teach us? 
Crypto can teach you a lot. Um, I think for me, uh, and kind of the way that Grayscale positions itself is really to take the best of the experiences that myself, a lot of my employees have had working in traditional finance and bring that to Grayscale, a culture of compliance, um, a culture that does things the right way, doesn't cut corners. Um, but we really also at the same time do try and break ties with a lot of the things that make working for some of those organizations, not terribly agile, not terribly forward thinking, um, and really gives people a space to um, authentically be themselves and honestly do their best work. Well, I think you see a little bit more diversity, inclusion, and things like that in the crypto landscape, which I think finance can take a page from. For sure. Um, and that's something we pride ourselves on, too. I think the fabric of our organization looks very, very different um, than your average you know, asset manager or financial services company. And that's been really important to me is we've continued to scale as an organization. And with sort of next, I know we're running out of time, but um, with sort of the next gen support behind crypto, how do you think they could sort of change the minds of, of the baby boomer generation and how they perceive it? It all comes down to education. Again, because crypto means different things to different people, we're constantly finding ways to create analogies between either parts of the investment universe that folks are comfortable with that have corollaries back to crypto, um, or perhaps helping people to understand some of the use cases around crypto that are solving real world issues that are just you know, continuing to go unresolved and create efficiencies and savings and things of that nature. That's really what it comes down to. Well, we are out of time, but we did really great there. Thank you, Michael. This is wonderful. Thank you.